one thing that interests me in all of this is some newer services that the cloud providers are rolling out to try to help out with this integration problem. The two that have come to mind are AWS Transit Gateway and Azure and their virtual WAN. So have you seen anybody actually using those? And has it been effective in helping with this whole SD-WAN issue or not so much? Um, well, these two things are not comparable. Okay. Let's Transit start Gateway is a perfect thingy and uh, eventually Azure will have to do something like that. Namely, the problem is that in uh, both public clouds, the ingress hypervisor is doing a packet lookup and sends the packet straight to the egress hypervisor. So they only do one lookup going from VM to VM. Okay. And that's why you can't have transit peerings. Because with transit peerings, the middle VPC would have to hairpin the traffic and they don't do that. Right. So if I have VPC the A, VPC B, and VPC C, C, A is paired to B, B is paired to C, and I try to send a packet from A to C, it won't go. Nope. Because no one is doing the hairpinning. This is where Transit Gateway comes in. Transit Gateway is really a VM-like instance. It's okay. distributed, it's scale out, you know, infinite bandwidth, all that, yada, yada. But it is really a server sitting on top of their cloud infrastructure. So it can do hairpinning. Right, right. There was something similar, which was the Transit VPC that they had before which was really just, you would kind of bring your own router. Yeah. <laughs> it would sit in the middle. Yeah, Cisco was promoting that because they wanted to sell more CSR licenses. Shocker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, well, there, is, there was one little problem with that. Namely, uh, you can't get routing into the VM appliance, remember? The only way right. to get routing into that CSR, you had to establish a VPN tunnel to the other VPC. Because mm -hmm. over VPN tunnel, you could run BGP. So right. you are paying for the appliance, you're paying for the CPU cycles, you're paying Cisco licenses, you're paying for the VPN gateway in every VPC. And now because this is VPN, uh, you're paying for the VPN traffic. And because this is VPN, technically it's going over the internet. So you're paying egress data fees. So it was really affordable solution. Yeah, what I'm hearing. yeah. exactly. <laughs> Okay, you want so to that, buy a Rolls Royce? Well, you're paying for a Rolls Royce and you're getting a Ford. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so that's the transit gateway. So that makes sense. So that's yeah. not really about SD-WAN or bringing stuff in. It's really about connecting all the networking you already have. Yes. Well, transit gateway does play a part in AWS's uh, sort of SD-WAN, if you wish, picture. Because yet again, if you want to hairpin, you have to terminate stuff somewhere in mm -hmm. something that is not the hypervisor. So what both of them are doing, it's effectively the same thing, but you know, different names, different this and that. Uh, you have to have uh, direct connect circuits or what's the other thing called? Direct route? Uh, express route is express Azure route, and yeah, direct and connect direct is AWS. Connect, yeah. Yep. The way I understood that was that you had to have a direct circuit to one or the other provider, and then they can link the locations that have direct circuit over their internal backbone. Okay. And in one of the cases, and I keep forgetting which one it is because, you know, it all mixes up after a while. <laughs> yeah. That's why I did the webinar. So people plus myself have some reference to go back to and figure out how stuff works. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I always have problems when doing the updates because I really have to go and like, oh, okay, this is Azure. Think Azure. This is how things are called. Don't call it VPC. It's VNet mm -hmm. type of stuff. Anyway, uh, in one of the cases, it was like frame relay, really. You had to establish direct circuits between any two locations you wanted to link. 
So you had locations A, B, C, and D, and you wanted to build a full mesh, you needed six direct circuits. All of them with BGP peering and everything, just for the fun of it. <laughs> so yes, it works. I would say it works better in PowerPoint than in real life. Mm -hmm. There is the other thing though that they both do. Namely, if you use a VPN gateway, and if you connect multiple locations to the VPN gateway, then the VPN gateway can do hairpinning. Right, I've, I've seen that design before. So then, if you are a reasonably small company and you deploy your app workloads in the cloud and you want to connect to the cloud through a VPN, from your locations because you know all they care about is just getting to the app workload. Like a retail type of environment where mm -hmm. every shop has to go to the central, you know, register and warehouse application and all that, but there is no need for stores to talk to each other really. Mm -hmm. So in those scenarios, you would just have many IPsec circuits to different locations, they would all terminate in one uh, VPN gateway. And now that VPN gateway can do hairpinning if you wish, so that your locations would be connected over the uh, VPN gateway sitting in the public cloud. And uh, then you can extend on that. And if you connect the VPN gateway to the transit gateway, and if you peer the transit gateways across regions, yada, 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 you could get, you know, things across their internal backbone. I love that you're right. talking about this and you, it's clear that most of these solutions, you're like, these all kind of suck and I hope you never have to do them. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, say Azure did something similar where if you have an express route in one area and you have an express route, let's say we've got one in North America and another express route in the EU, they made it so you could potentially use that express route for just your general traffic, send it up to Azure, have that peer across to your other express route circuit in the EU and have traffic come down that way. Of yeah, course, you're paying I, fees and stuff. And, but and that I was, think that's the one where you needed to have a, a separate VLAN for this connection. It's very possible. <laughs> But yeah, uh, they love offering this because they are charging you, you know, left and right and center twice. Yes. So we... They charge you ingress fees and they charge you the uh, circuit fees and they charge you inter-region fees and they charge you egress fees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are very good at metering everything and making oh, yeah. sure that they, they yeah, charge you back business for it. Model. It make, makes most of their bills impenetrable to the average human.